to Stroud. A little play action to start. Good protection. Airs it out for Collins. He's got it. One play. Touchdown, Texans. You aren't going to be seeing many of those in the near future because Nico Collins, the leading wide receiver in the National Football League for 2024, a guy who is second in yards per target, second in yards per route run, and fourth in receiving yards per game since the start of last year, will be out the next four weeks with a hamstring injury that he suffered catching a 67-yard touchdown pass from C.J. Stroud on Sunday against the Buffalo Bills. Some adversity for the Houston Texans. Hello, it is Galan and George on Wednesday, October 9th, 2024. Not good news, Joe, for the Houston Texans. It's not, and, and one of the reasons why it's not good news is because four weeks also might be optimistic. I, I, he's on the four-week injured reserve, but it's a hammy. And as we've seen with, you know, other players in the past, sometimes these injuries can linger. And, I, and you know, I know D'Amico, the second time he spoke uh, after the injury, was a little more optimistic about the, you know, Nico Collins. And so maybe it only is four weeks. Like, maybe this is the ultimate precaution, but it's a fingers crossed for me that it's only four weeks. It cost Justin Jefferson seven weeks last year. Every injury is different. But hamstring injuries are also injuries that re-aggravate themselves. It sucked to see this news pop up. However, and I know we live in a city where four and one isn't good enough for the local football team, which is, I think, off to a significantly better start than the baseball team was here in town. And yet people bought in with a lineup featuring Jose Abreu, yada, 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 whatever. I get it. Rings, all that crap. I'm looking at this team and I believe that if CJ Stroud is as good as I say he is, and I do believe that this is not going to be the issue that people are already making it out to be. And I know that they have been through some very sluggish moments offensively without Collins, not that much, time without Collins, but he has missed some time every single year. He missed a couple of games last year. He now will miss the next four. When you got a guy like Stroud, he's going to elevate the level of play for all the receivers around him. He's going to make life better for the offensive line in front of him. That's just what a guy like that does. So not an acceptable excuse over the, ne over the next four games for the Houston Texans. And those next four games are against the Patriots on Sunday, worst team in the NFL would have the number one draft pick if the season were to end today at the Packers who have Jordan Love back a home game against the Colts and at the New York Jets in Thursday night football who just fired their head coach Robert Sala. They should at the very least go two and two over that stretch without Nico Collins. I feel like three and one is in the cards. The Packers game is the only one I'm really looking at with a side eye. Stroud's able to make up for the fact that they will be without Collins. I mean, he should be. That's the standard we hold him to. Look, if you talked about any other quarterback that we put on this level, we would be saying the same thing. We, we talked about Patrick Mahomes. He's lost Rasheed Rice. He's lost Isaiah Pacheco. Yes, he has Travis Kelsey, who's obviously you know the best player on his team. But they keep losing guys, and he finds a way to make it work with Juju Smith-Schuster and Kareem Hunt. If Joe Burrow had a wide receiver be out, we would hold him to the same standard. So I'm with you. It's not an excuse. This is where Bobby Slowick and C.J. Stroud have to prove how good they truly are. Because we saw last year you know, how much they struggled with Tank Dell off the field. And when it was really just Schultz and Nico, it did look like a different team offensively towards the end of the season until they got to the playoff game. But that's part of the reason, like DJ Biennemi said yesterday when he was on with us, that's why it was a shrewd move to bring in Stephon Diggs. Here's Stephon Diggs and Tank Dell and Dalton Schultz. If that, if you pretended like Nico Collins didn't exist, you'd be happy with that wide receiver core, those guys catching passes from C.J. Stroud. We like Xavier Hutchinson. He's shown you know splashes of being really talented. Robert Woods is a still a good wide receiver. He's not great, but he's he's good. So it's not an excuse for me either. It is adversity that they have to overcome. But as you said, if CJ Stroud is the quarterback that we've put him in this category of being of top five, they should be able to go overcome this. You brought in Stephon Dix. You have Tank Dell. Make it work. No excuses allowed here. And really, this, I think, falls on Bobby Slow. You can't have an offense that's based on one wide receiver. And it does feel like at times last year, this was an offense based off of one wide receiver. Okay, it's CJ Stroud's rookie year. He's got his whoopee. 
He's got his little blankie that he's going to go to over and over and over again, especially after Tank Dell goes down. But time for Tank Dell to step up, actually catch the ball when it's thrown to him. Time for Stephon Diggs to step up a little bit more in a big role like this. And of course, in a contract year, you know he's going to want to get fed the football. They're not going to be able to stretch the field in the same way that they maybe were just by default because Collins can run by everybody the first couple of games of the year. But not an excuse. This 4-1 and one team is capable of winning, especially against a bunch of teams that aren't very good without Nico Collins. This should not be a gut punch, though it does feel based off of the reactions of many, Joe, that it is a gut punch. Some of that, I, I view it as the, just how good he's been. It's not, maybe it's not necessarily the gut punch of that the Texans are screwed, but it's the fact that he leads the NFL in receiving yards, that after only playing, what was it, a possession in the last game, that he still leads the NFL in receiving yards by uh, almost 100 yards, I think. So it, it's the, uh, it's a gut bunch of a it's a it's a bummer. It's a bummer that it's Nico certainly Collins a bummer. I'm isn't not gonna, gonna be out that. there. And like you know, you mentioned Diggs. This is his moment to earn a twenty five to thirty million dollar year contract from another team to go out there and be a dog and show like who he is as a number one guy still in the NFL without Nico Collins. So this should be major motivation for Stephon Diggs. He's gotta be seeing green right now with Nico Collins not on the field. A lot of other teams would be effed in this situation if they lost their number one guy. They're not. And I feel like they're going to end up being okay through it all. Fine. Not good necessarily. Things are definitely going to take a step back. The team needs to figure out how to run the ball. Again, Bobby Slowick. All eyes on you. But I do think Stroud is capable of raising the level of everybody around him. And while this does stink and maybe makes the idea of adding a wide receiver, something that many of the greedy fantasy football types are going to start pushing for. Oh, Devontae Adams. Oh, <laughs> straight for him. Oh, I need to give him a third round pick. Yeah, I mean, maybe a third and a fifth. Yeah. Just just take the call. Make him say no. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Uh, call him for a seventh. <laughs> Randy Moss got traded for a seventh round pick once. You never know. Yeah. True. Raiders do that all the time. It was from the Raiders. <laughs> so you, you never know. Resurrect Al Davis. He'll, he'll yeah. call it in uh, right now. They might just say, sure, you're not Kansas City. So we'll, we'll give you Devontae for a seventh. And then he can be wide receiver four when uh, Nico Collins gets back. Yeah. I, uh, you said two and two over the next four games? Uh, at least two and two. I, I'm with you. I, I feel like three and one is a, is a possibility. There will either be a loss to the Packers or a random loss that we don't see coming. 